For every band, there is a moment when they know they have made it. For one band, this is not that moment. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You're a great crowd. Okay, girls, we need the lane now. And your shoes. I'm a punk rock punk. They were three small town girls with big time dreams. Who's a rock star? I am. Who wanted to share their music with the world. We can't sit around here waiting for it to happen. We are musicians. We should be out there playing music. We do play. Nobody believed in them. You know, you suck. <laughs> but they believed in themselves. We're special. Yeah, special Ed. <laughs> now. In a world of tough competition. And that is so sad. Fate is giving the Pussycats the chance of a lifetime. We'd love for you to sign with Mega Records. How am I going to pull this off? I'm a girl from Riverdale. I'm not a rock star. you got to believe in yourself. Things are finally going their way. But between the mania... Is that Joseph? They're going to be huge. The managers. We decide everything. What's hot and what's not. Welcome to your party. Who else thinks that Fiona's a freak? And the media. We're gonna be on TRL. Mm -hmm. yeah! This may be the toughest gig they've ever played. Have you noticed that everything has sort of become all about Josie? Josie. 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 One, two, three. Spin around. I made you a rock star. Tell me you don't love that. Forget it. You know, I never liked you. No matter what happens, we will always be friends first. Are you gonna kill me with the guitar? You messed with the wrong pussycat. My bad. Josie and the Pussycats. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and Diet Coke is the new Pepsi One. Gatorade is the new Snapple. Orange is the new Pink. Joining me is my podcasting <laughs> sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. Do you remember Pink is the new blog? I do remember that. That's the 2000s, right? That is the 2000s. We are over plucking our eyebrows and putting on <laughs> glitter body lotion and dorking out about 2001's Josie and the Pussycats, written and directed by Harry Elfont and Deborah Kaplan. It's based on the comic strip. Um, it stars Rachel Lee Cook, Tara Reed, or Tara Reed, uh, Rosario Dawson, uh, Missy Piles in there, Alan Cumming, and Parker Posey. And we've got the the men, the boys from du jour, Donald Faison, Seth Green, Breckenmeyer, and Alexander Martin. We got to give du jour their shout out. Ah, oh, so um, good. Margo, this is a first time watch for Margo. So yeah. I know she didn't see it in the theater. I saw it in the theater and thought, oh, this is so cute. People are going to love it. And then nobody saw it. <laughs> Made I, no I, money. I, I'm astonished. Like, this is a cute movie. It's so cute. I don't know if, like, the marketing wasn't right or what, but when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, this movie's adorable. Everybody drank. And it's the music is super catchy, and it was so funny. And I know it has a cult following now, but it made no money. It was considered quite the bomb, and... I, I mean, I loved it. I even, I dressed up as Josie, my sister and I, and a friend of ours dressed up as Josie and the Pussycats that Halloween. <laughs> like, <laughs> after we I, saw it. So if, uh, we had a uh, Victor was one of, was one of our listeners. Mm -hmm. um, he said he's, I forget where, I don't know if he's in Australia or England. I'm sorry, Victor, I'm blanking right now, but he didn't grow up with Josie and the Pussycats. So for those of you who didn't grow up with Josie and the Pussycats, it was, a, was it a cartoon? Or was yeah. it a comic first? It was a comic was first, then a cartoon. Like, and it's from the same people that did Archie. Yeah, gang, they're Archie's all gang. Yeah, they're all related somehow. They maybe they all live in yeah. Riverdale. That maybe that's it. But it was like it, they had the Pussycats, and they were a band. They were girls. And it was so cute, and they play rock. And Cheryl Ladd was one of the voices. Oh, I didn't for know that. She's a singer. Yeah, 
And then there was the Pussycats in Outer Space. That was another. <laughs> I fucking loved it. And this is up there for me with Mannequin. As <gasps> in something I wasn't sure I remembered if I was going to like it. And then I was so completely enchanted. Oh, this makes me so happy. I knew Margot would love it, but there was a small part of me that was like, oh my God, what if she hates it? What if this is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer situation? <laughs> but I'm so glad that it wasn't. This movie, it it opens like instantly so funny. It's like TRL or whatever, which was the big show on MTV. Oh, and they're, my and they're, God. And Boy bands were all the rage around this time. So it was all your Backstreet Boys and your InSync's and your uh, 98 Carson Degrees. Daly. Carson Daly. All the stuff. And we get to see the band Du Jour. And it's all it's just like Donald Faison, Seth Green, Breckenmeyer, Alexander Martin. And they are they're Backstreet Boys or InSync, whoever they are, you know, and they each have their own like little character and their song is Backdoor Lover. <laughs> it's like, so, so get it, Backdoor Lover. <laughs> you know, and they're just like, all the girls are screaming for them. They're like, this, they're the most popular band on the planet. And then we get on their like private jet with them and they're just bickering about the stupidest shit like du jour means family du jour means friendship and they're fighting about like someone's got a pet monkey that's peeing on stuff and someone else stole someone else's look their face you know seth green with these he's everywhere he's doing my face and alan cumming so alan cummings i'm sorry so funny as <sighs> as he always is he's just he is such an amazing presence yes in movies and yeah he's their manager and they're being annoying they're yes. fighting each other and they're being annoying it made me this movie cracked me up several times because it just goes there yeah it's just bizarre and goes there it should have made so much more money um but they're they're on this private plane and then he and the pilot <laughs> just jump out. Yeah, they're like, like peace I'm, out. Because <laughs> they're just being annoying. And he's like, yeah, they're not making us money anymore anyway. So they yeah. just, so the band is, they don't know what happened to the band. They assume they're all dead because their plane crashed. And then he has to look for a new band. And then he's a part of a company. You're going to have to tell me a lot of, fill in some blanks for me because I, I only watched it one time. But yes. Parker Posey. Yeah, she a part of a company. Yeah, she runs. I think it's like Mega, Mega Records or something like that. I forget. Uh, let me go to my note. Burr, 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 burr. Mega Records. Yes, I was right. So the reason he like he's super annoyed with the with Dujour fighting, like he he's just rolling his eyes and like trying to keep it together. But also they're like we were listening to our new. St- track and we heard something that seems super weird we don't know what they're hearing but he's like oh yes that is weird and then him and the pilot are like goodbye and they like jump out of the plane (laughs) and it crashes so now he's landed in riverdale and he has to find a new band uh for mega records and that and it's run by parker posey who is like dialed it up to 11 in this movie so if you like it when parker posey goes all in you should see josie and the pussycats because if you liked her in party girl yes you'll love her in this or um dazed and confused like really like she's going for it day trippers yes is that the one with her yeah yeah she's going for it so he's searching for a rock band then it cuts to the pussycats so it's rachel lee cook adorable Rosario Dawson, adorable. Tara Reed, who I'm always like Meh, about Tara Reed, adorable. This she's is like, so cute, so cute. This is the best they. It's the best she's ever been, in my opinion. Like she's she's really funny, I think, and playing the one who's like the dumbest. <laughs> I I told you too. Like, yeah. I think she's high AF, but it's yeah. just my. I, I'm I'm just guessing, but but. It works for the character. Yeah, like she's, she's she's really spacey. dizzy. She's very spacey. That's a great word. She's very spacey, but she's also very sweet. She's very kind. Very kind. Yeah, and they they're just best friends, all living together. They're in a their band, the Pussy Cats, and their music is catchy as fuck. Mm-hmm. And um, the vocals are not 
Rachel Lee Cook. It's someone from Letters to Cleo. <laughs> Letters um, to Cleo. I loved that band. Um, Austin band. Kate K. Hanley is the mm-hmm. singer. And if you love le- Letters to Cleo, you will love the music from Josie and the Pussycats, which I do. She had pigtails. Like you right. wear pigtails sometimes. Yes, she I had, do. She had the pigtails. They had that song even now, even here and now, here and now. Yes, yes they played on the Melrose Place. Yeah, I had the Melrose Place soundtrack. Of course you did. <laughs> of course I did. So they are in their band. They don't make a lot of money. They're all living together, like eating ramen. Um, they're super cute. They're again adorable. Everybody drink. They're wearing their headband with the cat ears. That's their thing. They're the pussy cats, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, they're playing like a bowling alley. And we kind of, we meet some of the other characters. There's Missy Pyle as, I guess, she's like a frenemy, I guess. Um, she's the sister of one guy. I forget yeah, who, there's, what her deal is. Yeah, there's one guy named Alexander who's their like manager. And then she's his sister. And so right, she's okay. just always around. And then there's another boy that they call Al. His just he just goes by Alan M. I don't know what that's about. Again, I've never read the comic, so I don't remember. But anyway, he's the cutest boy in town, and Rachel Lee Cook is in love with him. Um, they're they're out walking around, and Alan Cummings like oh, it's such a funny scene because he's listening to Paradise by the Dashboard Light in his car, <laughs> and he like all literally almost runs them over, and like the light is shining on them and like somebody's walking by with a sign that says like hot, you know, number one in the world or something. They look like amazing rock stars. And he's like, Oh, like, and he instantly like signs them. And, you know, they're just like, well, you haven't even heard us play. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you wanted to be famous rock star. And they're like, ah, so they sign. And, Everything moves really fast. This movie's like 90 minutes. It's like move, 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 move. Yeah. It, it plays like a music video. It really does. And they we get like a makeover montage, even though they are absolutely gorgeous and do not require any kind of makeover. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what else is she, Rachel Lee Cook, what else has she been in? She did um, She's All That. Right. We talked about which that, Which is right? probably one we, yeah, we did that one. And then what else has she done? I'm trying to think, like, she wasn't the horse whisperer. That was Scarlett Johansson, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Let's look up Rachel Lee Cook. Yeah, please. Okay. I'm like, I need... Babysitter's she's Club, She's All That, Josie and the Pussycats. Those are her big ones. That's I, I know she's more recently done some, like, romantic comedies for maybe even holiday movies, I think. She's adorable. Yeah. I would watch her in anything. That's yeah, she's, point. she's she's absolutely adorable. And I love um, Rosaria Dawson. Like, I always love her. Every time she absolutely. shows up, I'm like, what a treat. Yeah. Like, she's just one of those people. And, of course, uh, Tara Reid went on to do Sharknado, which is... Your dir- friend directs. Which my friend directs all those movies. And I have nothing but good things to say about him and his Sharknado movies. Um, and what does he say I mean, and about her? She's... Actually, I know somebody worked with her. He said she was really nice. That's what he says too. He says yeah. she's really nice. Um, he has different opinions about some of the other people that are in there, and I can tell you that off mic. But yeah. um, no, he had nothing but nice things to say about her. I, I had a friend that she had a movie that was premiered on AOL or something, and my friend had to like give her do the media training for her, and because she was, she got she went through the shit. She had um. She had some bad plastic surgery and mm. she just got reamed for it in the press. Yeah. And she was just humiliated for it. And she kind of slowly came back to movies. And my friend said she was just like honestly really sweet, but just very sensitive. Aww. And yeah, yeah. So I'm, we were, I, I don't know. We were not kind. No. To, well, and honestly, a lot of people still aren't kind, but a lot of people weren't kind to our actresses and our young singers and actresses. In the late 90s, early 2000s, um, gossip blogs had really taken off and like we just nitpicked these people to death. I've talked about this in earlier episodes. I contributed to this problem. I was part of the problem back in the day. I was too. And 
she was one of those people that like no matter what she did people were like she's just a dumb blonde she's not a good actress she's pretty but she's dumb you know um if you weren't a size zero then you were fat you know all of those things and we treated people very very terrible and i think she was a victim of that for sure I feel the same way because I think she's really cute. She's got some, you know, she's got the riz. Yeah. And I, I would totally see her in other things. I think she's in the Big Lebowski, right? We've never done Big Lebowski. She, we have not. She was in that. And she did like, she did the, she was one of the big stars of this movie at the time because she had done American Pie. Right. And American Pie anyway, is huge. But yes. I like Tara Reid. I like, I, I, so I just want to say that. Yeah. And so they get a. They get a movie montage, you know, makeover montage. And again, they are already gorgeous. So they really didn't really need that. But it's all about like, you know, very low cut pants, skinny eyebrows and glitter body lotion, basically. The eyebrows made me so sad. Yeah. Because it's like we all did it. Yep. And some of us have to pay for that choice yep. forever. Yep. Yep. 20 years later, some La- of us are still. Ladies, don't, don't overpluck your don't, eyebrows. Don't I know. I know that the early 2000s stuff is coming back. Don't do it. Don't fall for that one. You will regret it. Don't do it. Okay. So again, they get their montage instantly. Like the billboard is up. They haven't even recorded anything. And he has changed. uh, Alan Cummings has changed their name to Josie and the Pussycats. And he's like laying the groundwork to kind of make Josie the star and create division in the team or in the Mm -hmm. band. I don't know quite why he wants to do that but i guess it's easier to control one person as opposed to three i think a band is a problem for him yeah yeah and then we meet parker posey as fiona and she's the head of the big record label and again she's gorgeous in this absolutely gorgeous and she's wearing very outrageous clothes and it turns out the whole thing is they are putting subliminal messages in the music so Every band they put out is the biggest band in the world because people hear the song once and it's like implanted in their brain. You will love Josie and the Pussycats. They're your favorite band. You will buy Reeboks. You will buy and everyone like they listen to it and they're instantly like, I want like Tara Reed's characters like I want a Big Mac. <laughs> and they're like, you're vegetarian. I don't know. I just want one. Let's just get a Big Mac. <laughs> she can't help herself. They have a uh, Fiona, the Parker Posey character, is like showing all these people around their their office, and they have like a short educational film, and it's hosted by Eugene Levy, and he's ex- yes, yes, and he's showing he's explaining how the subliminal messages work in rock music, and how and what's good for the economy is good for the country. That's the well, thing. We should. I want to say that um, in the eighties. 70s maybe i know in in the 80s there was a couple of books out that were all about subliminal messages in marketing and advertising and supposedly like there were orgies in the clam (laughs) menu and it made people i mean it was so hilarious and then records people thought records had these backwards messages and i i I remember i was in a debate class with somebody and he wanted he, he he claimed that Judas Priest had like put these satanic messages backwards and it caused yes. people that I'm just like, why the hell would you create something that would kill your audience? Right? Why would you create something <laughs> that would kill the only people who give a shit about you? Yes. Why would you do that? So anyway, there was this whole thing about subliminal that people thought were was a huge deal. And it turns out... It's not. If you can't hear it, you can't hear it. <laughs> exactly. But that the whole premise in this movie is that they are driving the account. They are tapping teenagers for their money. Like they they don't have commitments. They don't pay rent, but they have money. So they want them to buy all these things. So it's really like, again, they're just like selling like Snapple and shoes and, you yeah. know, and whatever band that they want to promote. And then, you know, they record a song. Um, again, another one that's just as fucking catchy as fuck, and they are instantly huge stars. Like it happens in one week, we get another montage because the whole movie's cut like a video, or, like a music video, and we see the sh- the song like climbing up the charts, and like the girls that used to hate them are now totally obsessed with them. Yes. 
so funny. It's so funny. Like, and uh, what, uh, Alan Cummings saying, like, normally you have to wait for your 10 year high school reunion to get that kind of validation. <laughs> And so Parker Posey's character has this idea. She has the, she wants to do like a huge pay-per-view concert, which if you don't know what pay-per-view is, ask your mom. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. like something that we used to like, well, it's, it's basically like renting a movie on your Amazon account or something, but you could like pay this one fee and watch a concert or whatever. And so she, and she sells these headbands with the cat ears and it's really just to put even more subliminal messages in their brain and we get like a snippet of it the voice is the movie phone guy which is again <laughs> like a super dated reference but it's a, i mean there's very dated references here yes. i mean from 20 oh, 20 plus years ago yeah. and also it's very american and yes. so but it's still, I think, like much like Wayne's World, like or the Brady Bunch movie, you don't really have to know the source material, no, to appreciate don't. it. Yeah, yeah. And so the the messages we hear are things like, "There's no Area 51. You want to conform." <laughs> <laughs> and um, oh, so you know, then nowadays it's like if you're a childless cat lady, right? You're a loser. You know they they don't even do. The subliminal messages anymore they're saying the quiet part out yeah, loud now yeah, exactly you're right <laughs> but uh so parker posey has like a huge fancy party and um she invites all of them to it and it's instantly she like takes them into like a girl's a little girl style bedroom and is like let's braid each other's hair and tell each other secrets and talk about how much we weigh and like it's so fucking weird and they are like very weirded out they leave and there's just a thing where they're trying to create a division like they're what what do they do they're telling josie like you're the real star you're the star and so they're trying to get val that's Rosario dawson and mel tara reed to go to oh they're gonna film trl that's what it is oh my god this cracked me up so much so if you don't know what trl was it was like an afternoon show on mtv that was on every day at like three o'clock or four o'clock it was like right when kids get home from school and they would like play whatever the top videos were of the day they would interview the biggest people in music and movies every day and it was hosted by carson daly and it was in Times square yes which is where their office i used to work in Times square and you would know when in sync or the backstreet boys or britney were in town or on trl because the noise would just be, and this is before it's all pedestrian now, so they don't have as much traffic there. Yeah, like it was full of traffic, and you could hear these people on top of all that. It was a very popular show. Yeah, and they wait, you know, they make signs, and they're outside, and then there's like a small audience, like inside, and it was it was really popular. Yeah, and so they are being told that they're going to go to this, and that Josie is going to stay behind and. He he basically gets her to listen to a song that has subliminal messages saying, you're the biggest star. You know, they didn't they don't do any of the work. So Rosario Dawson, Tari go to TRL or what they think is going to be TRL. <laughs> and it, it get, and they're like, wow, it looks super fake because it is. It's like super, it's like everything's like construction paper and cardboard. And Carson Daly's like, sorry, man. I have to kill you now. And he starts like, it's like, I go ahead. Sorry. He's so funny. He is. He's very funny in this scene. I didn't tell you. I did. I tell you I was, um, I went to TRL once. No. Tell me about I this. Was, I was there. So it was when Mariah Carey was releasing her CD of all of her number one songs. Mm-hmm. And they, they, instead of doing it live, we had a taped episode. So it was like a Sunday afternoon. Okay. And she showed up. She was like well over an hour late. And then when she got there, she um, was hungry. So they had to get her pretzels. So they were like rushing around trying to find pretzels. And then they brought her pretzels. She's like, no, flavored pretzels. So then they had to leave to get. I'm not kidding you. This and is then so they got Mariah Carey. It's, it's very on brand. 
she's beautiful, by the way, and, and really tall. She's much taller oh. than I thought she would be. She's like 5'9 or 5'10. Oh. Yeah. But anyway, but Carson was there. He's very tall. He's also very handsome. And uh, he was a big star. And he and Tara Reid were dating for a while. Yes. They were a couple. They're engaged, I think. I think so. And I think, well, when they, I, did they meet when they, I don't think they met yeah, when they, they met. were, did they meet filming this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's how they met. Or maybe he interviewed her. I feel maybe, like maybe or, he was already were, dating dating her. Maybe yeah. that's it. And she was on his show. He was a big star. He was. And like point. and he, he actually, was known yeah. for like everyone's like Carson Daly's so nice. He's like a like a Ryan Seacrest or whatever. You know, it's like he was everyone like Carson Daly would never hurt you. He would never chase you around <laughs> with a bat and try to kill you. And that's he's what's this happening very innocuous here. personality. Like he he had he 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 never overshadows the person yes with. <laughs> yeah. yeah he's like he's very vanilla you know it's like jello if jello was a person it would be carson daly like so when that one guy so there's this black guy that's his friend like the two of them are going to kill like ari spears fucking a he's funny yeah. he uh he does he does impersonations and it's also this is like it's so dated because he's he's doing one voice and then he does Bill Cosby's voice. And, what if I would do this? I'm yeah, he's like this. everyone likes Bill Cosby, and I was yeah, like, I like, like, oh no, dude. <laughs> but it did that cracked me up. I was, yeah. I mean, I loved this movie, but that like totally, I had it just it, this just delighted me. Yeah, so they get into both of these guys are trying to kill them. They fail, obviously. Spoilers, they fail. And, you know, and of course, like, Tara Reed gets the great, like, like, I would ever go out with someone like you, Carson Daly, and, like, you know, knocks him out with a bat, which is, ha-ha, they are actually dating. And then they come back, and they want to tell Josie about what happened, and Josie is now totally brainwashed. She's like, I'm the biggest star in the world, and you're just trying to ride my coattails, and they get into a huge fight. And they go their separate ways, and it doesn't it doesn't take very long for. Yeah, no, this movie off. is so perfectly timed. Yes. I have to say, yeah, yeah, they don't drag it out. Like, imme- no. like it's really quick. Josie's like, oh, like she figures out that she's been tricked, and she tries to, uh, you know, work it out with her, her peeps, with her bandmates, and. Now the big concert is coming and Fiona, the Parker Posey character, is freaking out because she had planned this whole thing. And so she, they're like holding like Rosario Dawson and Tara Reed at like, we're going to, oh, we're going to kill them. We're going to put them in a car and like crash it because this is what they do. Apparently when the band, when the musicians start to act up, they fake their death and then they put out a behind the music episode of Bill. Uh, behind the oh, there's so many shout outs here that are amazing. Like behind the music was a huge show on VH1, yes. which is the sister station for MTV. Yes. So it was like for for the olds. They and had that, and it was so. I used to watch I behind the music behind all the, music. the time. And they had the one woman that was like, she liked the Leaf Garrett episode. And I actually said the television, me too. <laughs> that was a good one. So they're, they're threatening to kill these, you know, kill them if Josie doesn't go on and perform. And uh, at some point, like Parker Posey yells, you should kiss my cellulite free ass. And I wrote that down. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, that's good. That's a good one. And that, you know, they get into a huge fight and like at some point du jour shows back up and most of the like famous parts of the band are all in full body cast. So I assume that that's not Seth Green or Breckenmeyer or Donald Faison at that point. And it's just the uh, other guy who wasn't as famous, uh, Alexander Martin. And they what else has he done? I couldn't find out anything else he's done. He's very cute. He's very cute. He's super cute. He's funny. Yeah. So I love that they survived the plane crash. It's just that the plane landed at a Metallica concert and everyone beat their ass. (laughs) 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 So they're in the full body cast. And then it just, it turns into a brawl with like, um, uh, Parker Posey and Rachel Lee Cook are fighting and that's like slap fighting and hair pulling and like 
it, yeah, it's just it's just a big fight. And in the in the middle of all of that, the like machine that's going to put out the subliminal messages is destroyed, and the subliminal messages that they were going to put out were all about just making Fiona universally popular. Like Fiona's the coolest. I want to just be like Fiona. And it turns out that she had this huge, she had a lisp when she was growing up in high school and she just wants people to think she's cool. She's going through all of this just so people will think she's cool. And Alan Cumming like realizes that they went to the same high school and that he's the albino kid. (laughs) It's so fucking and he like wipes his makeup off and he's like he's super super white and and he takes his like i don't know what he's he's wearing something that holds his stomach in and he like lets it out and i guess they're in love now it just took that moment yeah i guess and then uh then the government shows up and they have to pretend like they're surprised when they already know this sort of thing is going to happen and they arrest them and then they perform their music and everyone's like, we love Josie and the Pussycats, even without subliminal messages. Yay. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then like cute boy shows up and he's like, I'm in love with you, Josie. And she's like, me too. And they kiss. It, and it's adorable. It's, it's so satisfying. It's very, very, very cute. It's so cute. So and, cute. And it just, again, 90 minutes. It just totally moves. It's, it goes it was, down easy. It does. It was such a fun rewatch for me. I hadn't watched it in a little while. I, I was telling Margo before we started recording, the song Three Small Words, it's on multiple playlists I have. It's I think it's a very fun little, uh, like, punky jam so I, I wish I'd known it. it before when before I started teaching. I definitely would have included it in my classes because it is catchy and fun. Yeah. Now, well, I've been beat. singing it. <laughs> I've been singing it since I watched the movie yesterday nonstop. So catchy. I'm so glad you liked it, too. That I loved it. I absolutely it loved so it. so happy. Yeah, I get it. I get why people love it. So I read yeah. about a couple of other people that were considered for the role of Chosey, including Maggie Gyllenhaal. And, totally. And Zoe Deschanel. Totally. Yeah, I was like, both of them. I was like, sure, that could be a thing. And then at some point, apparently, Beyonce, Aaliyah, and Lisa Left Eye Lopez oh auditioned for God. Valerie. Isn't that amazing? And Rosario, was she in, I know she was in Rent the Movie. Was she in Rent on Broadway? I don't think I'm so. I'm the Broadway kid, but she was a, uh, she's a big deal. Yeah. But getting yeah. like, I guess um, they wanted someone who could really lean into the comedy and they weren't, what did they say? They said that Beyonce was actually really quiet and shy and that Aaliyah was too serious and thoughtful. <laughs> Poor Aaliyah. <laughs> I know. That's so, uh, so sad. I, I know. And then, Reed, Tara Reed, actually didn't have to audition. Like she was the one that because she of America star. Because she was a star from American Pie two years earlier. So I think she was also a partier and of course like women who party at that time yes. they were just like, oh Yeah, no, she was one hundred percent like hanging out with like the Lindsay Lohans and the Paris Hiltons and like was yeah. lumped into that group. But Again, we were not kind to our actress. Like, there's a whole bunch of them that, like, Amy Smart. I think we've talked about her and other... Amy Smart and... Um, who were the other ones? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I I just saw the Bling Ring yeah. movie. And I'm trying to think because it goes back... It harkens back to that time. Um, like, the, the hills and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, all those young women and they're they would go out and party and have fun and it's also the era of um the paparazzi in la was just off the it was over just the a nightmare top. like they were constantly the trying top. to like stick cameras under their skirts and shit it was really fucked Called up Called them names like say horrible names to them just to get them to look angry in a picture and they got so much money for these pictures if there's one good thing about social media it's that people can kind of negate that and just mm-hmm. put out their own stuff and their own way. Yeah. But yeah, she got, yeah. 
Ugh. Ugh. So there were, I made a list of the other movies that came out around the same time as Josie and the Pussycats. So these were also playing in the movie theater around the same time. Okay. Okay. Along Came the Spider. Yeah, that's a good one. I think that one's on our list. because we, we should definitely we, do that one. I like love that a, movie. We love a thriller. Yeah. Blow. That movie blows. <laughs> It's sad because the director died. I know Ted Demi. I wanted and Ted Demi. I remember really wanting to like Blow. Like the trailer for Blow got me really excited, and then my I saw it, and I, and I was like, like opening night. Yep. Yeah, and we were like, oh my god, this is slow. It's yeah. so like, yeah, it's it's not depths. It started making me question, like maybe he's actually not a very good actor. Yeah, I, it was not not for me. Uh, speaking of not for me, but other people love it. Joe Dirt. No thanks. No thank you. Uh, Bridget Jones's Diary. Love. Yeah. I yeah. Love. Yeah. No, it's really cute. Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. <laughs> I've strangely enough, I've never seen it. I have not I've never the trigger seen it. No. on that film. It could be brilliant for all we know. For all we know, it really could be. Uh, I think after part two, I was like, "That's fine. I'm done." <laughs> Oh, we just talked about this person a couple weeks ago. Um, Freddie got fingered. Oh, God. Tom Green. Tom Gr- So this is a year after uh, Charlie's Angels, yes. too. Yeah. Uh, another movie called One Night at McCool's. That's one of those indie films that was supposed to be cool, and it it's was. just stupid. Yeah. yeah. I think I had Liv Taylor. Tyler in it. I almost said Taylor again. Jesus. So weird. <laughs> uh, Town and Country. Do you remember that one? Uh Uh-uh. It is Diane Keaton and Warren Beatty. It was supposed to... I think it was supposed to be one of those, like, uh, Nancy Myers jams. Right. But it did not take off. Nobody was into that one. And then two more. A Knight's Tale. Yeah, that's a good movie. That's a fun one. I don't think we've done that one. That might be a fun one to do sometime. And then the last movie is Shrek. I love Shrek. I know not everybody loves it, but I love it. I think uh, younger people especially love Shrek. Like, they grew up watching Shrek all the time. Yeah. So, it's their thing. Do you want to hear the top ten songs for when this came out? Yeah. Holy shit balls. I, you might have to help me. Okay. Uh, number ten, Tamiya, Stranger in My House. Nope. <laughs> I'm no help. <laughs> Uh, number nine, Stutter by Joe featuring Mystical. I know who those people are, but I don't know the song. I thought I was listening to the radio in 2001, but okay. <laughs> number eight, Aerosmith Jaded. Mm. Don't remember that. Mm-mm. Oh my gosh. Number seven, Lenny Kravitz again. I don't oh, remember that song. yes, I know that one. I actually, I like that song. I love Lenny Kravitz. Me I'm, too. I'm totally on board. Uh, number six, Dido. Thank you. Remember Dido? Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw her at a f- concert. Someone gave me tickets to see... Shit, I don't remember. But she was one of the... <laughs> Travis? I think the band was Travis and Dido. And I Travis got... Travis was great. And I got... Like a friend was like, here, have my tickets. And I was like, cool. And uh, she was great. She has a lovely voice. I love the Amy Winehouse documentary that came out a few years ago. And there was a reporter talking to Amy and they were talking about like how her about Dido and Amy just goes, Hey, like Dido, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. Very different styles to say the least. Yeah. Number five. Is this another one? Case with missing you. It's a Def Jam. I don't know this. this I'm such an asshole. Number four, I do love the song. Crazy Town, Butterfly. Come, come, my baby. That's a catchy song. Catchy as fuck. Number three, I do know this one. Uh, Angel by Shaggy featuring Rayvon. Oh, yeah. I know that song. I didn't. It was never my thing, but I know what it is. Yeah. Number two, Survivor by Destiny's Child. Yes. That song I love. And uh, number one, Janet Jackson, All For You. I love that song. Yeah, it's really good. That's that's a good one. What else are you dorking out about, my friend? Well, let's start uh, quick. Uh, the Paralympics are on. I had it yes. on all day today. 
It's great. Uh, it's the same production team, basically, that handled the Olympics. They're in the same spots. It's yeah. Smart. It's I like watched the uh, opening. Repurpose it. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. It was so it? good. It was so good. So I've been watching that. Um, so we have to talk about Below Deck yes, Bed. Yes, I did. I watched. <laughs> what did you think? Um, I think uh, Aisha is a, tre- is a treasure. Yes, uh, I think that I felt so bad. She, she works her ass off, first of all. She did not have a break yeah. all day. And she had to work with those customers, yes. like, nonstop. So yeah, clients, what, what happens on Below Deck Met is there's a huge storm. And so they can't go out on the yacht. And they, they couldn't even go into Greece because all the roads were flooded. So basically, she's having to entertain all these people in the boat. And while I was watching it, I was thinking about how we had, like, when Calvin was, like, still really young, like, two years old, like, he was sick, he had a fever, but he wasn't, like, so sick that he couldn't do anything, and it was storming outside, and I was trapped in the house with this, like, not quite well enough kid and i had to think of shit to entertain that kid all day long and i was exhausted <laughs> it there yeah they with the thing with the clients is she was going to take them wine tasting they can't, yeah wine tasting and it's like you try you th- come up with activities there was one time below deck un- down under where like they just decided to play the board games in yes there, and like everyone was shocked that these people like could just sit and play you know scrabble and just have a Totally fine time, but they uh, so they were stuck there, and so she had to entertain them. And then they have the bosun Ian, who's the laziest ass. Oh my I god, mean, so lazy! God, just failing upward, just like the douchebag yes. that fails upward. Yes, that's that's Ian. Yeah, bless his heart. Uh, but so that night there was one of the they get sloshed i mean she does a wine tasting and they're all drinking yeah. at least a bottle each. yeah they're not when she's doing the tasting by the way she's giving them like a full glass of wine she's not giving them like a little splash they're all right. trashed especially the primary and it's that's her that's her you know her, her go-to there yeah. is like just get them wasted that's what they're doing <laughs> that show and it's yeah well you're on vacation you that know. woman was so Drunk. She was so w- wasted, and it's Aisha sad feeds her, feeds her like, like a, a like a yeah, like choo choo. Open your mouth. <laughs> like, like, you can't because this is the thing with Aisha. She'll do anything yes. to make people happy. Yes. Like she just doesn't see it like as beneath her. She figures it out. She's yes. so wonderful. She makes it work. She does. And Jono, who's the chef and has had a lot of problems, he's not trained. He tells you every week, I went to architecture school. I'd never <laughs> been to. It's so boring. So he, one of the women there cannot eat raw fish yes. because of the iron in it. And so he makes a bunch of dishes and he puts all raw food out. And because she had, she put one of the deck hands to take it out something happened and she couldn't deliver the plates to the table. It was like something else fucked up and she had to take care of that. And then the, the per, Sandy comes in and says, Hey, how's your meal? And she says, well, it's nice, but I can't eat it. It'll kill me. And maybe it's a bit dramatic. <laughs> under, under, wrong. understatement. <laughs> Which I, I mean, she's kind of like maybe, you know, raising the stakes there, but she's not wrong. I mean, she put it on all of her preference right. sheets and, and, and it looked like crap anyway. It looked, he was trying to make tuna carpaccio and it was like, it was too thick and it looked terrible. Yeah. So Sandy's so angry. She doesn't even take the plate away. She just, yeah. Like, I was back. like, I was like, girl, take the plate, take, at yeah. least take the plate. Like, <laughs> but she's so like, mad and I get yeah. it. Cause yeah, I absolutely. Mad. And she, so she goes to him and she's like, get that away from her right now. And then, and anyway, so and then he makes and the next night he makes. Oh, my God. This. Yes. Oh, my God. It's a couple. Once again, they it's their wedding the anniversary. Yeah. It's their wedding anniversary. They're doing, they're on a luxury yacht for a few days. They can't go out to sea because of the weather so that everyone's busting their ass. So it's this. So they have this fireworks display for them. And then John, it's their 25th anniversary. And he makes basically a chip, witch. he yes. makes cookie yes. with some ice cream and puts it on a plate and they, throws caramel on top. So, so like they were like, get it, 
the fuck away from me. Like they Get wouldn't even eat me. it. They were so mad. They were like, they literally asked for a souffle or creme brulee. They asked like, this is what we want. And he's like, here's your cookie. But it's so elevated because they made it homemade. I'm like, Anybody can make a homemade By the way, cookie, it was probably douchebag. delicious. I'm sure it was delicious, sure. but that's not what they asked for. And it's a late night snack. That yes. is not for an anniversary dinner, and it's not. So fast forward, um, there's a show on Peacock. Called, it's an after show for Below Deck, and they talk to the cast. And they only been doing this the last few episodes. And so, and it's like they're in pairs. Mm-hmm. And Jono's there with Brie, who lost her fucking dress this time. Like, she cannot get laundry <laughs> together. It's so funny. The, the, I've heard the tea is that they don't pay very well. It's typical reality television. Yeah. Like, they're acting like, No, well, you, you know, get paid in, in Instagram followers, basically. You get social media following. Yes. That's, that's your payment. So... They, a lot of these people, like, they go on this show. It's very heightened. You know, they, they're, they're always understaffed or whatever. And sometimes they have a hard time getting a job on another boat. Right. Because they were on this show. So they're, they're having a harder time getting quality people, which explains mm-hmm. um, this show. Because there's a couple of people that are like, they just don't deserve to even be here. We haven't even talked yeah. about Joe being a shithead. Oh, my and God. Stuff. But such anyway. a shithead. There's, I have such but, a long list here. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> But there's an after show and they ask Jono and he basically blames Aisha because he's like, she should have been checking that for me no. to make sure. I know he's the chef. He's the like, sole job. And, and Aisha, again, so kind, says yeah. in her confessional, like, I, I should be double checking this. I feel, you know, I do feel partly responsible, but she is also spread so thin because right. this is a, a big super yacht that should have four like interior people and she including her and there's only three and both of them are are idiots yes idiots yes and like ellie's like she doesn't appreciate me and she undermines me and and i was like bitch you are not doing a good job (laughs) like if you don't know to keep the wine in the fridge the white wine in the the fridge what are we even doing yes what are we what are we doing what are we even doing here? So she, he blames her for that. And then he's upset at Aisha because the woman who the primary who paid for the trip is like, we wanted creme brulee or we want something special. Take this back and tell the chef. Yeah. And he says, what people don't send things back. He never worked at a restaurant on top of everything. They have a chef who's never worked at a restaurant. So he didn't know that people send things back if they don't like it. And he yeah. thought she, Aisha was mean to bring it back to him. And she, and he thought she should have done it nicer. And it's like, and Sandy wants to fire him so bad. So she con- t- contacts Norma. Yeah. But Norma's like, sorry, Sandy, don't have a chef. I can get you another stew, but I don't have a chef. So Sandy's ready to fire the guy. He comes into her office. I don't think he realizes how close he was to getting. Yeah. should have been fired. Yeah, he should. Frankly. I mean, he. I mean, she might have fired him just for the cook for the chip, witch alone. I would, but the I would. feeding a guest food that could kill them seems make pretty really sick. If yes, nothing else. if if anything, you know. And I think it and if also, she were, go ahead. Sorry. Well, there's one woman who's actually drunker than her. Yes. Maybe the primary. And if he if she was the one with the issue, she would have just piled that food in her mouth yes. and not thought about it. Like that's the reason they tell you, and that's why it's it makes me so mad. He takes no responsibility mm. there and he doesn't in the after show. He's that very bums dismissive me out about it. And it really pisses me off. It bumps me out because he seems like a fun person. Like when, Yeah, but that's you know Yeah, but I, he has a job do your to job. do. Yes. And it highlights how much trust we put in to the yes. people that make our food. Like, yes. we're trusting you to, like, not poison us. Basically. Yeah, not to give us food poisoning. <laughs> yes. Not not to send us into shock. Not not into making us ill. Like, that's the whole thing. And I, I, I think it's his taste is, like, not very elevated. Mm. He thinks he's super bougie. Right. But he is not. I just and I felt bad like sometimes guests come on this on these boats and they're rude and I'm like fuck these people and they all have a lot of money or whatever but like I I had some empathy for these people because they spent a lot of money on an anniversary trip on a super yacht to like and then to show up and be like sorry we can't go out and you 
I mean, they they couldn't even go inland. Like they were literally. They, right. tr- and I was like, that must have been so fucking disappointing. Like, and you have to you, work. Then the interior has to work hard. Yeah, and you spent all of that money. Like all you don't money. You don't get a fat discount or something because of the weather. Like that's just the way it is. And I I felt bad for them, and then for them to like ask for something really special for dessert and to get a chip, which I was like, they were rightfully annoyed. And honestly, yeah. they left. They still gave them a really big tip, and I think it's because Aisha was so fucking good at yeah. entertaining them. Um, I mean, she was working up a sweat to, like, entertain these people. Uh, yeah. And then on top of that, they've got Joe walking around. He thinks he's fucking God's gift to women. Right. Like, what a fucking creep. Yeah. That's the the toxic masculinity on the show. It's yeah. been gradually going away. Uh, when you watch the first few seasons, it's alarming. Like, mm-hmm. it's like 2010. It doesn't seem that long ago, but there some of them are like yelling at women, <laughs> you know, like they get upset and just start screaming at people. It's like it's unreal. So anyway, yeah. hello, Dick. Very it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> so entertaining. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you got me to watch Below Deck Med because I only watch Below Deck Down Under for obvious yeah. reasons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else uh, on your list? Yeah, so I don't remember the name. It was a it was a documentary on Hulu, and it's Anita Pallenberg, and she was a woman who basically slept with three of the Rolling Stones. Damn. And she was also an actress, and she had a kid, a son with Keith Richards. Okay. And and she had this wild life, and I mean like very cool, and also just like ama- uh, incredible tragedies that 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 befell her mm. um but it, it's told very lovingly by her son and uh, i thought it was just really interesting i just love like those 60s yeah, mod chicks. Yeah. i think they're so fascinating um only murders in the building is on hulu oh yeah i haven't started yet i started it's pretty good they're they're actually they're in la Oh, and okay. They're being, and they're they're being uh they're gonna make a movie out, off of their podcast so then the actors have the leads of the show have actors that are going to be playing them. So Zach Galifianakis is playing uh, Steve Martin. No, no, he's playing uh, Nathan. No, he's oh, playing Martin Short. Martin Short. Thank you. Eva Longoria is playing Selena Gomez. <laughs> and then Eugene Levy is playing Steve Martin. We love him. And it's really good. Did you um, see th- the at the press at the opening thing that it looks like Martin Short and Meryl Streep are dating? Oh, they're in love. This, I think it, they're in love. It made me so happy. I know. And in the show, they're in love. They're yeah. they're they're dating. And yeah, she's in LA and she's doing really well. Like she's an actress and she got like a couple of great parts and they gave her like a glow up and she's beautiful. And she and Martin Short are adorable together. Everybody drink. Everybody drink. I when because I, I didn't know that that was a thing. And then I saw like because i know she had re- she had split with her her and her husband had split up a little while ago but it was just announced yeah. recently that they were anyway they were walking the red carpet together and they were holding hands and i was like what <laughs> like, i didn't know so cute yeah they're adorable i love i'm rooting for them i will start um, the show yeah and then uh, I saw on Netflix White Earp and the Cowboy. Oh Wars. yeah, I haven't started that one yet because, well, we'll get to why I haven't yet. Um, and you really like it. I love it. I thought it was really because uh, Tombstone's one of my favorite movies, yeah. and I'm I'm fascinated by the story. And Ed Harris does the narration, and they do. It's all you know. It's all actors. What am I? What's the word I'm thinking of? They're doing um, like reenactments, right? Reenactments. Thank you. And the actors are actually really good. Sometimes it's like, you know, the old unsolved mysteries yeah. level of acting. <laughs> yeah, where they don't really show a face. It's like they don't. It's and like, like hands and wigs, feet, and yeah. And there's smoke, like to just make it look misty. Right. And it's like it's an yeah. No, this this they actually spend the money, and it looks pretty. For the most part, it looks, but the acting is, I thought, really good. And I thought it was just really interesting. Yeah. It's on Netflix. It's that one's on my list too. Yeah. That's it. Okay. I, 
I guess I'm into exes this week. So I, uh, Crazy Ex Girlfriend, the show that was used to be on the CW, starring Rachel Bloom, um, was like a comedy musical. It's been on Netflix. I started watching it a little while ago and then saw that it was leaving Netflix. So I was like, well, no, I have to finish it. So I've been like obsessively watching Crazy Ex Girlfriend and I finished it. And when I finished it, I couldn't comprehend that the show hadn't won like a million awards and been insanely popular. And I wonder if it was like maybe a little ahead of its time. Like I'm wondering if now with TikTok and Instagram reels, if the show would have done better if it was made now, because the songs are really, really funny. And the show is more thoughtful than I was giving it credit for as a deal. Cause the name is a little off putting and they make jokes about the name of the show immediately. And she makes so many bad choices. And by season three, she's diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And it's about like her therapy and whether or not to take meds and trying to make right choices for yourself. And, and I was like, this is just a silly musical comedy that's dealing with something that a lot of people struggle with. And it's very well done. And like everyone on the cast can sing and dance and, it's really, really funny. And sadly, it's leaving Netflix. I don't know where it's going to end up after that. Um, but if y'all haven't watched it and want, think you could finish it before the fifth. <laughs> go for it. But then after that, um, I watched all four episodes last night of Worst X Ever. <laughs> and I saw that and I brain instantly went, Sonya's going to watch the shit out of this. <laughs> I did. And I texted you and I said, it should be called worst police ever because <laughs> all of them, the police fail these people over and over and over, especially the women. Surprise, especially the women. Uh, like these women are like, I'm being stalked or this person. There's a lot of ab it's a lot of trigger warnings, y'all. So like take care of yourself when you're watching this one. You know, there's a lot of abuse going on and these women go to the police and the police are like, D don't help them very often until they like get beaten within an inch of their life or somebody is murdered and then they get involved. And it's it's very frustrating. That's why, like, I was like, no thanks. I. But did you like it, or did you? I did. I watched all four episodes. I was gonna say, damn. I. I. They also have uh, new unsolved mysteries on Netflix. Yes. And they are terrible. Like I tried watching them, and they're it's so bad. And it's it, they actually did Mothman, which was a <laughs> was my brother was obsessed with Mothman. He swore that was real. And so I can't. I, I know yeah. I know that like old school Unsolved Mysteries had episodes like that, but it's it turns out I, I don't never, I don't like those ones very much. No, I don't want the supernatural. No. I, I want it I want crime. I want it like yeah. the mysteries that needs to be something like that. Yeah. Not like are there moth people the in first, Chicago? The first season of the new Unsolved Mysteries was pretty good. If I it remember. was excellent. I like the second season too. I they're very watchable, if nothing else. Like yes. I, they told the storytelling. I don't know why it doesn't work this time, but it was like all of them. I could not get into them. I'm like, this is this and, is a big mess. Yeah, and honestly, unsolved mysteries are kind of an acquired taste because it's telling you right in the title, we're not going to solve this, <laughs> <laughs> and it leaves you frustrated. Yeah, for sure. Every once in a while, like you hear Robert Stack's voice go, "Update." We found a guy. Oh my god, Yay! I would I would lose my shit back in the day when there was going to be an update. I was like, it's happening. <laughs> There's an update. They caught someone. Oh, I used to love that. Uh, that's yeah, that was fun. It was so fun. Yeah, I was So anyway, worst ex ever if you like that stuff. It's 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 a tough watch. Um there's you will be frustrated when you watch it. But I was uh, apparently this is the same crew, same people that did worst roommate ever, 
which I never watched. And now I'm like, oh, that was a good show. And I, I was like, that. see, maybe I need to watch that one. So I'll be going back it. and watching yeah. that one. And then uh, did I watch anything else this week? I don't think so. Uh, because did you go to the movies. Oh, thank you, Margo. Oh. <laughs> Last week, right after we were done recording, actually, I went and saw Alien Romulus because for some reason, I will continue to see these alien movies, even though I never like any of the new ones. So I went. Um, I actually like this one more than the other two, uh, more than Prometheus or Covenant. Um, it stars Kaylee Spanny from mm-hmm. uh, Priscilla mm-hmm. is, is the is the Ripley equivalent here. Um, there's some like fan servicey things where I was like, we didn't need that. But I think the aliens themselves are really, really creepy. And I always enjoy the alien stuff. So like the little spider face huggers, there's a lot of stuff with that. There's some good stuff with the alien. It's, it is a prequel to, uh, aliens, I think. Um, I think alien. Right? Um, no, wrong? so it happens, it takes place after Alien, but before Aliens. And there is some, I don't think this is, well, I don't want to spoil things for people, but they they resurrect somebody, um, an actor who's actually passed away and kind of use his likeness. And I have mixed feelings about that sort of thing. Um, it's it's a little too much, isn't it? Yeah, I just I I'm not sure they needed to do that. You know, I mean, if if we want to spoil it, I could spoil it, but I I just don't feel like that's a necessary thing to do. Not for the not even for this character. I don't think you need to do that. So it makes me feel icky, and it takes me out of the movie, and I don't like that. But I think that. There's a lot of practical effects in the movie that look really cool. There's some really cool scenes with like zero gravity and like the acid blood that I was like, oh, I've never seen that before. Like, that's pretty cool. So in general, I was like entertained. And I think if you are someone who maybe doesn't have like a really strong connection to the first Alien movies, you might really like this one. Like, my niece Lorelai saw it, and she loved it. She thinks it's dope. And I'm like, but I love the first two so much. Right. That, like, my bar's really high. You know? Um, but if you really like the Alien movies, then yeah. it's I like it way better than Prometheus, and I like it more than Covenant, too. So that's saying something, I guess. It was worth my time. That's my that goes on the poster. There you go. It was worth my time, Sonia Mansfield. Dorking out. <laughs> it was something to watch, Sonia Mansfield. It's a thing to watch. It's a thing to watch. <laughs> uh, I I do have tickets to go see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice next week. So hopefully, I'll have a review for our next episode. Yeah, where when it's where's the playing? Are you going to go to uh, Alamo? I'm going to the Alamo. Yes, I'm going to the Alamo. And do they have like special stuff you can buy? Apparently they do. They've got like their special menu and they've got like a special popcorn bucket that looks like the black and white snake thing. Um I don't know if I need that stuff, but um if they've got a pint glass, I'll take it. I love my yeah. I love my pint glasses. Uh, maybe we should do Beetlejuice next. Have we done Beetlejuice? I'd love to do Beetlejuice. I'd love that. Oh my god! Let's okay. Here you go, everybody. Announcement: Next week's episode will be Beetlejuice. That'll be a good one. I'll get Calvin yeah. to watch it with me. Nice. Oh, I'm excited now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was everything on my list, my friend. Where can they find you on the internet? You could find me at Brooklyn Margo for TikTok and for Twitter and then for Instagram and threads. And I'm looking for people to follow me in those places. It's under Brooklyn Fitchick. So please follow me in those places. And my site is brooklynfitchick.com. And if you like the sound of our voices, we also co-host another podcast called What a Creep. Guess what we talk about there? Creeps. Creeps from Creeps. the past to the present. Uh, this week's episode is part three 
on Ronald Reagan. Uh, so we already have Ronald Reagan's very terrible mental health policies. We did his uh, part two is the lack of response to the AIDS epidemic. And this one is trickle down economics and welfare queens. Um, I'm going to take for a break from Reagan after this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not me. It's you, Reagan. You're a really big fucking creep. And I'm done living in that world. So I'll be moving on. But uh, listen to us there. It's super fun. We end every episode with someone who's not a creep. So do that. And if you can find me at the Sonia show dot com and the Sonia show on Twitter and Instagram and uh, Blue Sky and Threads. threads yes threads i'm trying much like margo's doing a really good job of like building like trying to use stuff outside of twitter and i'm trying to follow her lead so please join me wherever but yeah oh and tiktok i'm on tiktok too too much probably actually i think i think <laughs> musk is you heard that they had to they shut it down in brazil i know lucky lucky <laughs> and yeah i think he's just burning it all to the ground because he should asshole. be given billions of dollars because he's so good at his work. Fucking like, creep. He's such an asshole. Such I mean, such an asshole. Ugh. Oh, and you could, duh, you could find Dorking Out Show at dorkingoutshow.com. Email us at dorkingoutshow at gmail. If you give us your address, Margo will send you stickers. They're adorable. She'll do that. Uh, and also send us your suggestions. Yeah, there. we take requests. So you can email it to us. You can send it to us on social media, Dorking Out Show, Twitter, Threads, Facebook, Instagram, all the places. And uh, wherever you listen, like if you want to give us a review, we wouldn't say no. We Didn't we just get a review? Yeah, we now? did. We did. Hold on. Hold on. Bring Queens, up, Queens Yankee Gal gave us five stars thank you ladies or lady i should say uh she says that it's one of her favorites she says that she thinks uh we provide a public service she gave a shout out to adam um Aww. it was to adam risky from f this movie our brother from another mother so thank 